Hey Moon Magic Super Souls, welcome to your Moon Month update. Uh, and welcome to anyone new if you're new to my channel. So what you're going to see in this video is, uh, first of all, I'm going to shift the camera down and we're going to look at some cards and runes that are kind of giving us general information about the overall flow of energy for this moon month. I'm very, very passionate about manifesting with the moon. And so this gives us an indication of what actually looks to be like a very dynamic flow of energy. Not surprising, we're in eclipse season. Things can happen very, very quickly. But to be honest, from a perspective of manifestation, this moon month looks as though not only could things happen quickly, but you could really utilize the energy that's coming in and kind of make stuff happen for you if you have an awareness of how this is working. It's very dynamic. So we'll look at those cards. Then I'm going to draw cards and runes for every zodiac sign, asking for a key message for every zodiac sign for the coming month. What's the top priority message that spirit wishes you to connect with for the coming moon month. Then I'm going to give you an overview of the incoming lunar influences throughout this period. And I personally have found this to be really, really helpful in my manifestations because sometimes the energy is really intense. Sometimes it really isn't favorable for pushing forwards. Sometimes it's ideal to stop and reflect and review. If you have the heads up of this energy and you sort of start to align your diary, your scheduling, your responses to this energy, it can really assist you in navigating in such a fluent way. For me, it's been life changing. So it's fabulous to share this with you. So beautiful souls. Um, I think I should shift the camera down and we should just get started. Let's have a look at the cards and the runes for the month ahead. So our first card, giving and receiving with the rune Kano of openings. This card really aligns beautifully with the new moon eclipse in Libra energy because it's all about balance. You know, when we talk about giving and taking, we're talking about trying to live in a balanced way. I mean, this card does acknowledge a, a difference between taking and receiving. Give and take is different to giving and receiving. Taking and receiving are not the same. When we take, whoever we take from may or may not have chosen to give. However, when we receive, choice and respect are an integral part of the exchange. Let go of any need to take and embrace the harmony of giving and receiving. I always feel this is taking give and take a step further into a sort of a more spiritual dimension. Kano, the rune of openings, is literally that. It's about finding direction. It's a rune that suggests windows of opportunity will be made available to us, um, clarity of direction. And so I feel this start to our moon month in alignment with the eclipse energy, when we can connect and see the relationship between the past, the present and the future that we want to manifest, sort of gives us an opportunity to align in a, a manner with, with balance, ultimately a spiritual kind of alignment of balance, and to take the risk to see it through and put it into action. Burkana suggests a whole new phase of growth. And the take a risk card, this card says, um, step out of your comfort zone. Feeling safe and secure is a wonderful experience, but if we remain in our safe zone for fear of change, we create a limiting and restrictive environment that can ultimately lead to stagnation and the loss of our creative potential to manifest our greatest contribution in the world. Let go of fear and take a risk. So, what we're kind of seeing in quite a dynamic moon month, full of, po ups, full of possibility, it's almost more than that, it's loaded with possibility, with intense periods where the lunar flow is coming in and saying, come on, let's get going. Simultaneously moments where there could be an intensity when we need to pause, reflect, course correct, make adjustments. Overall, it's kind of like get in balance, walk your talk and let's make this happen. That feels for me what, what we're seeing. But with course corrections, with an opportunity to see if something isn't quite working along the way, the rune of movement suggests the gathering of momentum. And I have to say the energy in this movement looks to do exactly that. This is also the bettering of any situation. So it's a positive movement forwards, a positive growth. 
Course Correct says, if an obstacle or diversion has interrupted your plans, this card is here to assure you that the delay is providential, bringing you an opportunity to pause and reassess in order to fine tune your direction. So this for me really tunes in with the flavor of the moon month. It's kind of like get into balance, align your energy, with whatever it is you really want to manifest, what do you desire, walk your talk, be prepared to step up and make it happen, and then trust that the universe will show you anything you need to see along the way to, to kind of keep you on track, and then persevere. We have this beautiful card of persevere. Who would have thought that a humble acorn could grow into a mighty oak tree? But of course, this takes time. Whatever you are involved in, this card brings a message of reassurance. Your hard work and continued effort and dedication will come to fruition. You are asked to persevere and trust. Beautiful, beautiful card. And it sits with Fehu. Um, this is the rune of possessions, of nourishment. This is like ambitions satisfied, unexpected rewards and gains and surprises. So there's a distinct energy of, as we've said, getting going, aligning your energy with what you really want, being shown exactly what you need in order to get yourself properly on track and off you go with the potential for seeing significant results, possibly quite fast because eclipse season does make things happen very quickly. So this is an incredible flow of energy presented in the cards and the runes. These are the cards and the runes that are drawn um, in the calendar month, so September and October, in the Manifest with the Moon, um, Art of Manifestation, Astro Moon Diary. And next year's uh, diary and journal will soon be available. So if you are interested in manifesting with the moon, let me just bring up those covers for you to see. If you're interested in manifesting with the moon, these books will be available soon. I'll make an announcement here on YouTube and probably do a little video to show you how to use them to really, really get the absolute max out of the information within them. But for now, beautiful souls, let's move into the cards and the runes for each zodiac sign. And I'm going to be asking for a key message, the most important message that each sign are needing to know about in order to really utilize the overall energy of this moon month at its absolute best. My deeper, bigger all zodiac sign readings are actually on another platform. They are on Patreon. So we'll look at the most important message for every sign. Um, these messages will be relevant to your rising sign, your sun sign, your moon sign. And if you know your chart and, and any of the signs have uh, a significant number of planets in them, you might want to check that sign out as well. And indeed, you might want to cross watch for friends and family or indeed partners or potential partners. But if you want to check out those deeper uh, readings, the bigger readings. Patreon is a platform that works on the basis of donations. You can give as little or as much as you wish, and you can kind of opt in and opt out. There are no tie-ins whatsoever. And I will put a link in the description box below and also a link to join my subscriber email list. If you're interested in being on an email list, I do give away a free private reading every month and also a pack of these cards. These are my own Art of Manifestation Oracle cards. I give away a free pack of these. It's a signed first limited edition pack every month and I will also soon be giving away some diaries and journals too. So if you are interested in being in that prize draw and also because I will notify everybody on that list as well of the um, arrival of the diary and the journal as soon as they are ready and good to go, um, you know, it's a great list to be on if you want to be updated. So beautiful souls, tons of love, let's crack on and start to draw cards for every sign. Hey lovely Aries, welcome. Let's find out what your primary, most important message from Spirit is for this coming moon month. May we have information. I am seeing this one here and this and that for you, my beautiful Aries. And let's draw you some tarot cards as well. What shall we use? This pack, I think. Yes. Hmm. Oh, I do feel that one too. 
Okay, lovely Aries, what are we shown for you? In fact, let's move these out of the way because I think we're going to need the full space. Twelfth house escape. That's very interesting, lovely Aries. So twelfth house escape. You then have Bacana, the rune of growth. Okay, you have Suelo, the rune of wholeness. You have Awes, the rune of defense. Twelfth house escape. Ace of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, and the Six of Pentacles. Wow. Wow, 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 lovely Aries. Wow, wow, wow. I actually feel like your primary message is... I think something... Something you are doing something you've initiated is about to potentially take off your primary message here because eclipse season says things can happen quickly persevere with it this i suspect you're already persevering but i i almost feel like my beautiful aries you've been paving the way building a building the foundation stones for a little while on something. I don't think it's new, but I think it's taking a turn or um, what, what am I feeling? It's like, you know, like if you're driving along, I feel, I feel like it's got that energy of driving along in a car and you're, you're on a kind of a road that's got a lot of bumps in it and, and you're having to sort of navigate it. It's, it's like you've set off on a journey and the pathway has required quite a lot of attention to the detail. You're having to drive carefully and suddenly it's like you reach the point where you turn onto an open road and you can accelerate. That's what I feel is almost like, like the primary message, the most important message that Spirit wishes to give you. Uh, it's almost like you're on that open road and it's like you free yourself or you escape from something that's felt a bit sticky walking through treacle not quite feeling quite right so something you've been investing in something that you are stepping up into uh, it, it's like you've made the right adjustments you've done the right tweaking you've paid enough attention to it and suddenly the open road is in front of you you know where you're going hold your focus this is what your primary message is from spirit, from source, from the universe, from your team. Keep working at what you're working on, my beautiful Aries. Hold your focus because it's about to take off. It's going to literally shift a gear. And curiously enough, I do feel you may have felt like walking through treacle it's not quite right but i i don't think it's felt easy or balanced or as if it's been flowing with ease you know how sometimes you have days when let, again you let's use the analogy of driving somewhere and you drive somewhere and uh, you know every traffic light turns to red and then you pull onto an open road and a tractor pulls out in front of you and then a combine harvester and suddenly it's kind of like you you just it's delay after delay and you do get to where you're going but you've got to persevere but somehow it doesn't run smoothly i sort of feel like this moon month is going to bring you some kind of an opportunity or a shift in the energy and I think this is what eclipse season is bringing for you a shift in the energy that means that something can really start to take off almost as if the work you've put in so far driving carefully okay you're stuck behind a tractor but you know you've you've been patient you couldn't see to overtake it so you didn't take you didn't take an inappropriate risk you've kind of You've been navigating stuff. And what I see is it, something now shifts. It shifts a gear. 
Awaz, uh, the rune of defense is an interesting energy to be coming in because again, I sort of feel like in this moon month, if anything shows up that kind of feels like it's getting in the way, it's purely there to so that you can tweak your direction, get a bit clearer, um, consolidate where you are. But I don't think it's going to hinder your progress. I, I feel like there's a positivity here, uh, an abundance, because we've got these beautiful flowers here in every one of these rune cards and the hair of fertility and the same crescent moon shape here in both Awaz and Burkana. And this lovely Queen of Swords. Hold your focus, Aries. Stay on track. I think you're going to reach a point where you can be quite benevolent and generous with the results of your work within this moon month. I think you're going to see some results, I sort of want to say quite quickly, something gathering momentum. Aries, I, I think it's a stunning time for you. I think it involves perseverance. I think it involves keeping a clear head. I think it involves staying sort of on track whilst being open to tweak and make adjustments along the way. I, th I feel like you're going to finally get into a rhythm and it will accelerate. So whatever area of your life or even overall, everything in your life, whatever area of your life this is speaking to, I, I think it's going to be a productive and it may not always be fluing, f fluing. It may not always be flowing. What's with the fluing? What's with my words? Okay, Aries, it may not always be flowing. But you know what's really coming through? It's a very strong message, so I'll just voice it. If something isn't flowing, it may mean there's another area that you need to pay attention to. It's the giving and receiving and the balance that's coming through here. So for example, if something work-wise isn't flowing, I think it's because maybe another area of your life needs your investment as well. I think there's something for you guys about course correcting, because I'm sort of seeing this forward motion, this flow energy, moving out of, literally, it's like driving along a little road with lots of potholes in it and you're having to take it really slowly and suddenly you're on that open road. But I think that open road needs to apply to every area of your life not just your working world. So if something isn't working, I think it's more likely to be connected to bringing yourself back into balance in some way, shape or form. If you guys are interested in listening to the detail of the moon influences, you'll kind of get a real flavour of, of how this might affect you because I, after I've done all the zodiac sign um, messages, we'll move to that um, to that sort of incoming lunar energy. But it's very, very fascinating because it's really, really quite clear that there are periods to push ahead, periods to ease back. And I think it will be very relevant to you, my beautiful Aries. Super souls, don't forget to check in on my readings if you want to do a bigger deep dive um, for the moon month on Patreon. But otherwise, beautiful souls, have an amazing month and do enjoy the moon month energy update as well. Tons of love to you, Aries. Hey Taurus, welcome to your moon month message. What's the primary message that the universe wishes to bring you? Uranus genius. That's pretty fab, my lovely Tauruses. What are you moving forwards here in this beautiful eclipse energy? Let's draw some tarot cards for you and some runes and see what is the most important message that spirit wishes to bring you for the coming moon month, my lovely Tauruses. Now there we've seen this room and this room and this. Okay, so you have, oh, fertility. Wow, this is fabulous, fertility, Ingas. And you also have Rado, the rune of journey, and Othilla, separation. Mm, goodness me. You then have six of pentacles. You have the devil, and you also have the five of swords. Hmm, this is very, very interesting. Beautiful souls, I feel you are... 
gosh, having like a moment of genius. I, I feel like this could be a month for you, Taurus. Your primary message, I think, is that you have something, I think you have something very, very important, special to prioritise, to bring forth, to make happen. What I do think this reading is saying is you're going to have to compromise in order to make it possible. Okay. Now, we know the flow of energy this moon month is all about trying to be in balance. You know, the new moon eclipse in Libra is calling for everything to be in balance, life work balance, um, you know, self-care, care of others, all that kind of stuff. And we're seeing momentum, perseverance. I think for you guys, my lovely Tauruses, you may actually have to make some choices and decisions about how you manage your time. Because I think there's something that you're going to need to prioritise. Something you're going to need to move forwards. But in order to achieve it, I'm seeing you needing to possibly let go of some other things. Almost as if you, if you were trying to juggle too many balls, you've got to realistically, it doesn't mean you're letting go permanently of something, some of you might be letting go of something, but I, I feel your reading has much more an energy of putting some things down in order to step up. Almost as if there's something that will require your focus. Um, you don't want to be spread too thinly, that's what I'm feeling here. Because otherwise, um, if there's too many demands upon you, uh, I think you'll just end up sort of being exhausted. So the key message, the primary message for you, my beautiful Tauruses, is actually to set a priority. You don't have to put anything down permanently, but I think what you'll find is that you'll get a significant amount of work done in a way that's really going to move you forwards. I say work because it could be a personal situation, but whatever is uppermost in your world. There's something for you to focus on. Give it your fullest attention. We're talking a moon month here. So we're not talking endlessly. It, 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 I, yeah, I, I just feel for you, Tauruses, that there is something for you to bring forth and it needs to be your priority. It's going to ultimately bring you in some really, really, it's, it's going to be prosperous. It's going to be benef ben beneficial here. It's going to be the oak tree here. It's like so planting a humble acorn and it turns into an oak tree. There's something around you that really is going to do remarkably well in the long term. And this is a moon month when you are needing to give it your top priority focus. Um, because the work you do now is seriously going to pay off for you in the long run. I think it will take you far. So that is your primary message, my beautiful Tauruses. I think you will know what this focus is. I think you'll know what this genius is, this something. It's very unique to you. Whatever it is, Tauruses, give it your full attention. And it's not at the expense of anything else, because ultimately, by giving it your full attention, uh, get, making it a priority, it's actually going to feed and fuel everything else. On the surface, it may seem as though you're having to juggle things and make some difficult choices, but ultimately it will bring more choice into your life. So my beautiful Tauruses, that is your um, main key message from Spirit for this moon month. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I am sending you all the love in the world. If you're interested in my bigger All Zodiac Sign readings, which are on Patreon, do check them out. Um, Super Souls have an amazing month. This is looking as though this is absolutely going to pay off and it's really, really, really worth your while. Um, literally putting a few things down if you need to, prioritising this because ultimately this is going to open your world up massively. Taurus, tons of love and see you again soon in some other readings or indeed um, yeah, in the uh, moon month um, update in a moment. Hey Gemini, what's your ooh, moon month message, um, your priority moon month message? Well, this is awesome. Jupiter return benefits. This looks to be a fab moon month for you at this point in time with that first card. What is the primary message, the most important message for Gemini 
from Source Spirit, from the universe, for the coming moon month. What are we looking at here? I am seeing this and actually this one too. Mm, and no, nope, that's not feeling quite right. Let's, here we are. So your extra runes, you have Awaz. This is the rune of defense. You have Gibo, the rune of partnership and Wunjo, the rune of joy. Well, that's beautiful. You then have Page of Wands, Knight of Wands, and the Two of Pentacles. Ah, okay, lovely Gemini. Uh, your message, your primary most important message from Spirit is incredibly clear. Something that has been troubling you, something you felt quite almost defensive about, something you've been defensive about or guarded about is um, it's basically going to um, get fixed here. Jupiter returns benefits and I think it's going to happen quickly. So something that has been, I think it connects to a particular person with Gibo, the rune of partnership. It may be that you've even started something or invested in something and it's been going through a period of a bit of a wobble or you're waiting for something to happen and it hasn't yet happened um, I think your primary message is really almost like a message of reassurance literally the whole energy of this situation is going to shift it's going to come back into balance you're going to um, receive what you need to make it um, to make something sort of realign you're going to get the benefit of something could be the benefit of the doubt if there's been some sort of discord, it could be like a, a financial benefit, something coming in that helps you to realign, reorientate. But with the Rune of Joy, we are seeing a really, really, really fabulous outcome. And with Jupiter Return benefits, we're seeing a fabulous outcome. It's almost as if there's been something, something in your world has been on hold. It's been put on hold and you've been having to sort of navigate around it somehow. And I'm not saying it's been ultra, ultra difficult. For some of you, it may well have been ultra difficult. So I'm not also placing that aside. For others, it's been just almost a bit like a, an obstacle or an, a bit like the elephant in the living room, something that can't really be said or it can't really be voiced or it's just got in the way. Something gets illuminated, brought to light, something shifts, something gets resolved or attended to, whatever it is in the context of your life, your primary message, my beautiful Geminis, is one of complete and utter reassurance. This will shift, this will change, and it's going to change quite suddenly with the Knight of Wands. It will happen quickly and fast. It's kind of like you can then set sail, make plans for the future. This is what's really coming through, a very interesting energy around you, as if you have not been able to proceed with something that you want to proceed with. Something has blocked it, got in the way. It's kind of like your ship comes in and then you can set sail, as it were. So something is at last moving forwards. It does feel like an at last. And within the context of your world, my beautiful Geminis, because it will be unique to you each, I sort of have a feeling that it's it's really going to lift a bit of a weight off your shoulders. I really do, yeah, a weight off your shoulders. Hmm, very, very lovely for you, Gemini. It really, really is. This is definitely your message from Spirit, the primary message for this moon month. Something will shift, something will change, the weight will be lifted, something you have been waiting for is going to arrive, your ship will come in, but in accordance with that, you can also then set sail. It's like something has blocked you from proceeding with something you want to do. So you will at last be able to persevere and move something forward. 
my beautiful Geminis, this is your primary message. It is a joy to read for you. If you're interested in my more in-depth Zodiac readings, you're very welcome to connect with me on Patreon and have a check out of our beautiful Patreon community. I do tutorials over there as well. Um, there are loads and loads to check in on in learning to read the cards and the runes. But however we look at this beautiful Geminis, um, this feels like an absolute blessing for you. It really, really does. Tons and tons and tons of love. Hey, my lovely Cancer, let's see what your primary, most important message is from Source, from Spirit. What does Spirit wish you to know about for this moon month? You have Saturn return age. How interesting, something arriving, coming back to you. Uh, I kind of almost want to say a turning point. Well, let's have a look at your runes as well. It's like something's come full circle. That's what I'm hearing. Something comes full circle, my lovely, beautiful Cancers. Okay, seeing this card and this. What is the most important message from Spirit for my beautiful Cancers? Something is coming full circle, beautiful souls. You have Wunjo, the rune of joy, wonderful. Algis, the rune of protection, and Jira, the rune of harvest. Yeah, your harvest is coming in. Something you have been patiently waiting for, my lovely Cancers, is going to come flying into your world at speed. And the lovers, wow. And the queen of swords. How fascinating. Now, we know that in eclipse season, things can happen very quickly, and we've got this overall flow of energy here. I just feel that for you, something you have been waiting for so patiently is finally coming in, a full circle, Saturn returns, something's come a full circle, it's, it's a space of completion, the harvest comes in with Jira. It's something you will be overjoyed to have. Now we have the card of the lovers. Do you know for some of you, you might even be reunited with someone, someone coming back into your world, reconnected, something comes a full circle. But you have really wanted this for a long time. You've had it in mind. You've thought about it. You've been manifesting madly by trying to keep your focus. Whatever this is for you, my lovely Cancers, it's coming in and I think it's going to happen fast. Now, eclipse season does tend to create this kind of connection. And because there is a connection between the past, the present and the future, particularly and Saturn return, I do feel you may reconnect with something, some, something from the past that you've wanted may arrive quite quickly. Someone from the past could come into your world, you could reconnect. But however we look at this, this is something you have been holding in mind, keeping in focus. You've thought about it a lot. You've wanted it a lot. You've desired it. And my goodness me, you have been patiently waiting for this, my lovely Cancers. With the card of the lovers, it could indicate a relationship. The card of the lovers is primarily a card of choice, which is another indication, I think, in your reading that something you have wanted that maybe has felt a bit out of reach suddenly becomes available to you. But, my beautiful Cancers, your primary message is really clear. Something you have desired, you have waited so patiently. I have this real sense of you sitting patiently waiting day after day, week after week. When will it happen? Why isn't it, why isn't it happening? It's got that flavour. And finally, it arrives. Quite suddenly, really. Quite fast. Almost out of the blue. And yes... It could be for some of you that a doorway opens or, or there is a choice made available to you that will bring you the thing that you've been focused on under wanting to manifest. But overall, this is your primary message, my beautiful Cancer. Something you have really 
waited for is about to come to fruition. And fast. I sort of feel it's going to happen unexpectedly as well. That's got a flavour with this Eight of Wands coming in here. And it's very curious. What it's reminding me of, you know, and I'll, I'll voice it as an example. I remember uh, meeting somebody, it was actually at an event, a very fabulous event, and she was actually helping. She was one of the helpers. And she, we just got chatting and, and ended up kind of forming a friendship. And she actually was telling me about the way that she met her husband. And she said, I just had reached that point where I just didn't think it would ever, ever happen. And I'd sort of almost accepted that I was going to have an amazing life on my own and I was going to build my world for myself. And then she said, out of the blue, I went to something in the village that I live in, bumped into him, got talking. We hit it off immediately. It was so unexpected. And he'd been living around the corner. She said, I'd been in that village for something like four and a half years. I didn't, I'd never met him. Our paths had never crossed. And all of a sudden, it was just this magical moment. And she said, you know, within three months, we were engaged. It, it, it was like so decisive and so fast. And it came out of the blue, even though it was something she had really, really wanted. Her her harvest happened it came in now I'm not suggesting in any way that for all of you this would be about relationship but if you think about that kind of flow of energy something you've wanted you've been really patient you may even have reached a point where you just thought do you know what I accept that I'm going to live differently or do something different and suddenly it just happens just like that out of the blue that's the flavor of your reading my beautiful beautiful cancers and this is your priority message for this moon month. So beautiful souls, thank you so, so much, Cancer, for joining me. If you're interested in checking out my more in-depth um, All Zodiac Sign readings, they are over on Patreon. But otherwise, it is fabulous to be connecting with you. Do check out the moon month flow of energy because it might give you some idea of timings. And I am sending you all the love in the world and see you again soon. Welcome, Leo, to your moon month message. What is the most important message for you for this coming month? I'm seeing this card for you. Let's have a look at your very first card, beautiful Leo. You have solar eclipse revolution. Well, we're in eclipse season. Wow's a wow. And this is such a Leo sun kind of energy, really. There's so much vibrancy. It kind of looks like we've got solar flares coming out here. Wow. Right. We need more cards for you, my beautiful Leos. We need more cards for my beautiful Leos. May we ask, please, those are your three straight away for the primary most important message that Leo needs to know for this moon month, this eclipse season moon month. Curiously enough, I'm actually seeing this one. Okay, so we have, okay, so you have Nathus, the rune of constraint, followed by Fehu, the rune of possessions, nourishment, and then Awaz, the rune of defense. My beautiful Leos, I feel that you are literally going to break out of a situation that has been restricting you. Something's been holding you back, limiting your horizons. Wheel of Fortune, the Four of Swords. How interesting. Look at the imagery on this card. Look how she sits. She looks tired. Okay. And then we have the Six of Pentacles. Ah, lovely, lovely Leos. I am loving your reading. Okay, so your primary message is actually very clear. There is a very specific situation around you. Beautiful souls, I believe you will know what this is because I don't think it's new. I think it's around you now. And it's... It, it's holding you back. It feels like it's just not moving forwards. It will be unique to you each in your own circumstances. But what I'm seeing is, not only is the Wheel of Fortune going to turn, how, how interesting, can you see in this Wheel of Fortune as well? Talk about eclipse season. Can you see here that what we have bang in the middle is a sun and a moon? 
Look, can you see the little face in there? We have a sun and a moon sitting together. The eclipse energy. I suspect it will be at the solar eclipse that you might get this turning point. Now, this is the new moon. I, I sort of feel that there's something that's going to happen, possibly even between the new moon and the full moon uh, in, in a two week period. That's just what's coming through for me here. But something of a restriction or a limitation is going to shift, break open. What is really interesting, it's coming because of a gift. Can you see the six of pentacles? Somebody is generously offering somebody something, a gift. And likewise here, we have this beautiful squirrel holding up uh, an acorn. Even I find myself looking at the hands in the images in these cards. We start here and then we end here. And how interesting, look, Fehu. The, um, the rune of possessions, of nourishment, of unexpected rewards, gains, surprises. I think you're going to be gifted with something. Look at this. Now, just um, my mind is being blown by the imagery in the cards and the connections that are just coming through as I just pause my mind and just sit and notice, observe. We have an oak tree here being offered to you. We have an acorn being held up. We have the same rune here. Who would have thought that a humble acorn could grow into a mighty oak tree? But of course, this takes time. Whatever you are involved in, this card brings a message of reassurance. Your hard work and continued effort and dedication will come to fruition. You are asked to persevere and trust. So my beautiful Leos, I think you're going to be offered an opportunity, given an opportunity. I think it's emerging around the time of the solar eclipse, which is the new moon. And I think it will potentially gather momentum. Now, it may feel like it's, gosh, taking a risk, stepping out of your comfort zone. But with the rune of Awas, I think you're being, I won't say advised, because you have conscious free will and choice. I mean, no reading is ever going to tell you what to do. That's up to you. But I think you're being given an opportunity to recognise, um, basically, don't be defensive. Don't be defensive. If, if something isn't feeling, if something is feeling restricted or not quite right, then sort of listen to that. Uh, because I think there's going to be an opportunity for you to move in a, in a slightly different direction. I think your message is incredibly clear, my beautiful Leos. Not only is this restriction or this feeling of stuckness around you going to shift, but actually, oh, I've just noticed something else I must bring my um, attention and focus to in just a second. Let me just finish first though. But actually, it's coming through a gift. Someone's going to give you something. Now, what I just noticed here was that this is a bear. Do you know, I almost didn't see that. I feel like with the bear energy, it's like coming, coming out of your cave. So a period of time, maybe even, that you have felt restricted or constrained by something. I think there has been a period of time. So I, do, I don't think this is new to you. A period of time when something hasn't been either running smoothly or quite working for you. Leo, your key message, the most primary message, the important message for you for this moon month is that this is going to shift. You'll be offered something. And don't be defensive, seize the moment really, because actually this is something that could grow from an acorn into an oak tree. It feels as though a pathway is being opened up for you. Beautiful Leos, thank you so, so much for joining me. Do check out the uh, Moon Month update at the end of these cards. And beautiful souls, if you're interested in checking out my bigger, deeper, more in-depth readings for all zodiac signs, they're over on Patreon. Leo, tons of love. Have an amazing month. Hey, beautiful Virgos, let's find out what your key message from spirit is. What do you really need to know above and beyond anything for this coming moon month? I'm actually seeing this card in the central position. You have the card of Leo, I will. Mm. This is a very interesting energy for you, my lovely Virgos. 
Okay, I will. Mm. Let's see what this is about. Sort of feels quite assertive. It's got quite an assertive energy, my lovely Virgos. What are you going to be assertive about? Okay, we have three cards here for you. Let's draw three rune cards as well. I'm seeing this and well, there we are. Those are your three runes. Okay, what do we have? You have the rune of movement, Awaz. How interesting. This is a horse. It's about power, assertiveness, choosing. I feel like my beautiful Virgos, you can make choices and, and really do something with them. Choices of empowerment. Ooh, look at this. You then have the snake energy here of Perth and um, it says Perth Row. I know this rune as Perth. This is the rune of initiation. It's transformation. These snakes are holding a key. Gosh, you have the opportunity here. I mean, that there's always a shift in the energy at eclipse season. So for every reading, there will be within the primary message, there'll be some kind of turning point generally, because that's what eclipse season is about. Yeah, you hold the key to moving something forwards here. Taking It's actually taking some sort of action. Whether it's an action of courage with the bull here. How interesting. Uras, this is the rune of strength. It's like harnessing the power of an oxen. Your reading is all about empowerment. How you use your power. You then have the magician again. Well, the card of alchemy. How do you use your power? What are you creating? What are you putting into the world? You then have the death card. My goodness me. And then the ace of swords. Wowza, wow, Virgo. That's all I can say to you at this precise moment. Wow. This is incredibly significant to have the magician and the death card as well. My beautiful Virgos, this is a fascinating reading because what I'm seeing here is a point of choice. Now, there's always a shift in energy, as I've already said, but what I'm hearing in your reading and seeing so clearly is that you are in charge of the direction of the shift. The energy shift that is happening, I will, Ace of Swords, clear thinking. You are absolutely in charge of what happens within the shift of energy here. You can create something, you can bring something to an end and you can rebirth, you can start afresh. There is something here of strength. I almost want to say have the strength of your convictions, lovely Virgo. The rune of initiation is an interesting energy because the rune of initiation, Perth, it speaks of it's like a very personal, private journey, a very personal, private space of evolution where you recognize something but what, of yourself. It's, it's like a, a rite of passage, let's say. And I feel within this rite of passage, it, it's, there's a key here as to how you do something, but it's your free will and conscious choice here, completely and utterly your decision, your choice. My lovely Virgos, whatever is taking place in the uniqueness of your personal worlds, because this is a, a general reading, there's absolutely such a clear energy around you of personal empowerment. You can choose what you do within a situation. You know, whatever the turning point here, whatever you make of it, it, it is really coming down to you, to your assertiveness, to your personal will, to the choices you're making. But there's such empowerment here if you wish to transform something in your life. It, it's so, so clear. Now, whether when we look at these other cards here for the flow of energy, whether something has been feeling out of balance or not been working for you or you've taken a risk and you're a bit anxious about it and something doesn't feel as if it's running quite smoothly or in the direction you want to go in. 
whatever is, is taking place around you, you now have an opportunity to make choices, to course correct, literally, if you wish to. And literally to kind of almost like to move something forwards here. But it's a very big transformation and, and it is a personal choice for you, my beautiful souls. It really, really is. It's almost as if spirit, source, the universe here is saying to you, well, what do you want to create? What kind of future do you want to create? Because your thoughts, your deeds, your actions right here and right now, especially in eclipse season, are going to create the future that you're going to be living in. So what kind of world do you want to create? What energy do you want to be around you in the future? What energy are you sitting in? What choices are you making now? Because they are the shape of the future that will come to you. And that is what we're seeing here. So really a place of absolute profound personal empowerment through your own choices, Virgo. This is very, very, very powerful beautiful souls. Uh, if you're interested in my longer, more in-depth readings, you're welcome to check them out on Patreon. But the primary message here for you from Spirit for this moon month is incredibly clear. It's about empowering yourself. And gosh, some major kind of sort of like a, like a spiritual growth spurt is available to you here. And I really do believe it's building a very different future for you. Um, or literally, let, let's just say build, it's like you're painting a picture and you're planning it all out. And, or I don't know, building, let's say you're going to build your dream house. The design, you're at the design stage here. And whatever you are designing within your mind, within your thoughts, your actions and your words, that's, that's kind of like the house you're going to be living in. So pretty powerful and amazing opportunity for you. So get really, really clear about what you actually want, because that's what you're creating and that's what you're building. Beautiful souls, this is a reading of absolute empowerment. My lovely, lovely Virgos, I am so excited for you. Tons and tons of love, and I look forward to seeing you in some other readings. Do check out the rest of the Moon Month Flow of Energy because there's some real peaks and troughs within that that I think you guys can tap into to really access that source of empowerment for yourselves. Tons and tons of love, beautiful souls. Hey, beautiful Libras, let's check out and see what message we are being shown for you. Curiously enough, I'm seeing two cards for you. You're the first sign that's had two of these cards come through. But let's have a look at them first. What's the most important message for you for this moon month? You have fifth house creativity and solar eclipse revolution. Wow. Okay. What else are we shown? What's the most important message that you need to know, my lovely Libras, for this moon month? I'm seeing this, this. May we have information for my lovely Libras, please. Okay. Okay, this one, and I'm also seeing this one. Okay, let us have a look. What is happening for beautiful Libra? You have Awaz, the horse, here. This, for me, is about power movement, empowerment, something building, gathering momentum. Then we have Lagos, the rune of flow, beautiful little, um, beautiful little seahorse here. Oh, and then Burkana. Libra, I actually think for you, something is going to gather momentum and take off. That's what I want to say to you, my beautiful souls. You are the first sign that's had two cards from this pack. Something you're working on is actually going to take off. It's going to gather momentum. Libra, whatever you are personally attending to, don't hold back. Yes, look at this. We have the death card. I feel like gateways are going to open for you, doorways open, because you also have the Eight of Wands. I mean, this is about energy moving forwards. It's about empowerment. It's, it's stuff happening. Look at the colouring here. And then we have the Two of Cups. Ah, okay. I'm just going to shift all the cards along so we can see everything. So my beautiful Libras, obviously, 
this is your new moon. This is your new moon eclipse. And therefore, the energy is primed for you to assist you, to move something forwards, to create an opening. With Berkana, the rune of growth, and we have Berkana here, take a risk. So there's a really big connection here to taking a risk. You know, the universe can offer us a, a doorway, a gateway, but we ourselves have to step through it. I think that something is going to build. It's going to gather momentum, I think it could turn your world upside down with the death card and revolution. I mean, this is your eclipse. No wonder we were drawn to have two cards here. With the two of cups and these two faces here, I feel that there is a possibility that, uh, this is a general reading. If you're looking for love, this might be the point when you meet someone, so take a risk. If you're working on a creative project, Collaboration may be involved. Take a risk. Something is really, really potentially going to move forwards. Bacana speaks of a whole new phase of life. And the death card is about death and rebirth. I think your primary message, my beautiful Libras, it, it, I almost feel like it's rubber stamping the energy of the eclipse, which is your eclipse. It's your new moon every year. Happy birthday, by the way, as well. But, you know, every, every new moon is a new window of opportunity when we can set our wishes and our intentions. And for you, this is like the most powerful new moon of the year. And... Because it's an eclipse moon, it has a, a much greater, it's like it's, it's got more turbocharged to it in terms of those wishes and intentions. And they are already turbocharged for you. You know, this is a powerful moon to be wishing on for you. It really, really is. But also then taking action. The Eight of Wands is a card of action. I sort of feel like also you can be you. And this is really interesting. I'll, I'll explore this within my bigger All Zodiac Sign readings over on Patreon. But I do want to give you the clearest, most precise um, meaning coming through for your primary message. And because with these two masks, I sort of feel like you can be yourself. If there's anything in your world where you haven't felt you could fully express yourself, I think there'll be an opportunity for full expression. So whether that's in relationship or in the creative aspects of your world, but movement, the bettering of any situation, the gathering of momentum, Lagos, something flowing and it flowing into fertility. So your message is very, very clear. Your primary message. I almost feel like this is a like a wish come true, like like if, if you th thought of spirit or source or the universe as being a genie in the bottle, the genie has just popped up and said, right, what would you wish for? What's your greatest wish? And you can kind of wave a magic wand and it will start to happen. You will have to take action as well. And it may mean, say course correcting, but you may need to make some decisions that move you away from one aspect of your life into the new one that you really desire. But it, this is all about what you desire, asking for it, not being afraid to ask for it. And then as the universe opens doorways, stepping through them. This is a message of empowerment. And literally, I do feel it's like being offered one wish from the genie in the bottle. Well, there may be more than one, to be fair for you. But primarily, literally, the universe saying, I'd like to wave a magic wand for you. What would you like? And then you have to align yourself with that. You have to set the wish, set the intention, recognize certain things will be left behind because that's part of growth and growing, and then take those steps to move forwards. Lovely Libra, this looks to be as dynamic, I suppose, as we would expect it to be, but it's so, so, so exciting. And so loaded, loaded with that turbocharged energy. Yeah, if you've been feeling like you've been driving an old car that just can never get going, um, you know, it's like someone just hands you a sports car and you put your foot down and you are just rocketing. It's got that turbocharged energy around it. 
all I can say to you beautiful Libras is take advantage seize the moment and use the energy because it's primed for you it really really is beautiful souls uh, if any of you wish to come over to patreon and do a bit of a deeper dive and look at a bigger picture I would love to see you over there I do a tutorial over there as well um, teaching how to read the cards and runes every month I do a tutorial but beautiful Libras just happy birthday and have the most amazing eclipse season Hey, beautiful Scorpios, let's check out and see what is the primary message for you, the most important message from Spirit, Source, the Universe, for this moon month for you. You have solar eclipse revolution. This has come out, it's quite interesting. Here we are at a solar eclipse in eclipse season and this card keeps showing up. I just think that's just amazing. Okay, let's ask what's happening for my beautiful Scorpios. Okay, so we've got one two here let's ask for another for you and let's draw some additional rune cards as well so may we please ask what is happening for my beautiful Scorpios please we have this one I'm seeing and this one and this one so we have Rado, the rune of journey. We have Lagos, the rune of flow. Fabulous. And Burkana. Oh, these are super cards. Gosh, Scorpios, what are you doing? If any of you are actually moving house or planning to move house, I think that could well happen. I think eclipse season, this moon month, if you've been waiting for kind of like contracts to be signed, I think it's going to shift. It's going to happen. Eclipse season is so powerful in terms of change and transformation. You have the world, wow. You have the card of strength and you have the six of cups. Okay, Burkana, growth. Hmm. I want to say, my beautiful Scorpios, that I feel some aspect of your material world, very particular, your material world is shifting. That's the primary message from spirit is to say, Handle the journey, handle the transition. You're moving from a place of, you're moving into something new. It could be a career pathway, it, it could be a house move. There's something in the physicality of your, your, your world. It will be unique to each of you. But within your world, um, there is something in the physicality of this. So it could be your home, your work, your job, your family, your environment, um, yeah, there's something, even your health maybe, but something is moving. You're in the process of a transition from A to B. I think you're probably already in the transition. You may be feeling quite tired with the card of strength. The card of strength kind of indicates that sometimes you know, we start to get a bit tired. We're feeling like we've worked solidly and, you know, we're. it's almost like that point of harvest, I feel a bit like uh, when you've worked solidly to, to grow an amazing garden and then the point at which you've got to bring in all the vegetables, you're really quite tired because you've done lots of work to get there. But I feel like this is a turning point for you whereby something that you have put a lot of work into, even if it was the preparation for something like moving house, for example, that that's then going to happen and you've kind of got to Almost like put down roots, re-establish yourself. There's a real sense of, of this physicality. What we're being shown here, and this is your pri primary message, is that this is completely the right move for you. And it will happen. And it will happen fast. And it will happen solidly. It's going to flow. It's going to take place. And you're going to land easily. I almost feel like this is a validation for you, Scorpio, that you have made the right choice. That's coming through quite strongly. You may have been feeling like you've, you're in a zone where you're stepping into a, a risk zone, for example. You've made some adjustments. You've persevered in your planning. But I, I think you've sort of already made some kind of choice. That's what's really coming through here for me. You've made some kind of choice and you may be in that intermittent stage right here and right now. But what is going to happen in the in the moon month? This feels like a rubber stamp that says you've made the right decision and you will 
settle really quickly even though you might still be in the turbulence of the move indeed it may be as you come into eclipse season that you're still involved in that you're in the turbulence of um of some kind of transition in your in the geography or the physicality of your world but you're going to settle really quickly and you're going to feel really pleased with yourself i think there's a real sense of Oh, I'm here and I've landed. Even the card of strength here. She's so kind of cool with herself here. You know, she's had to kind of battle with some demons within to get here. Maybe decision making, actual physical circumstances to overcome and get to. But I feel like she, she gets to this point where she's almost like tamed the lion within. And here she is having a great time obviously I'm saying she because I'm seeing she's here but you know this is she in a non-gender specific way beautiful Scorpios I think you're going to land and feel good this feels like an affirmation actually for you as much as anything um, a rubber stamping from the universe from spirit from source to say you made the right choice this is going to be fabulous for you uh, almost like reassurance as you enter that point of turbulent revolution when you're let's if we use the metaphor of moving house when you're packing boxes and in the throes of it all or even still looking at different apartments or whatever it is that you're in the throes of it's 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 hard to think gosh am i making the right choice or it's hard not to question that um this is an affirmation yes you're making the right choices and by the end of the moon month i think you're going to be kind of sitting pretty really which is lovely real affirmation of um the perseverance will pay off that's what is coming through for you beautiful scorpios um, beautiful souls if you're interested in my bigger more in-depth readings you're welcome to join me over on patreon but otherwise do check out the moon um, information the incoming energy because that may well help you enormously in navigating whatever you are processing and moving through and to and beautiful souls i look forward to seeing you really really soon for some other readings tons of love to you Hey, beautiful Saggies. Let's see what, oh, there's your first card. Let's see what most important message, what the top priority message is for you. Mercury retrograde reinvention. How interesting, beautiful Saggies. What a powerful card to have in a in, in eclipse season. I mean, let's just dive in. What's your primary message? Reinvention, wow. I'm seeing these three actually. Uh, maybe we draw some more cards for my beautiful Sagis. What's the most important message from Spirit for you for this moon month? I am going to. Um, do you know, I feel it's the one on the base of the pack here. Okay, what do we have? We have Rado, the Rune of Journey. Now, this is very interesting with this Mercury retrograde card because Rado sometimes implies a journey a real journey but sometimes it implies a journey within removing any obstacles from within effectively so that you can reinvent some aspect of your world now we have protection algis and we also have othilla this is the rune of separation this can speak of real property sometimes a couple of um readings have suggested potentially for different signs i mean i guess it's eclipse season so we're talking about a shift in the energy but the potential for house moving they're generic readings so you know this needs to be relevant to you you, you need to listen to the, these messages and eclipse season is about transformation and change very quickly i literally feel like you get to almost uh, reinvent some part of your world restructure some part of your world change it radically change it take charge of it see what you need to do in order to change it yes look at this we have the eight of cups we have the three of cups and we have the six of cups Sanjis, this is beautiful absolutely lovely we've got celebration and a real sense of also I, I feel like personal satisfaction sitting in a place of kind of benevolence peacefulness generosity comfortableness 
being at ease with yourself. I think your primary message, beautiful Sages, is that there's something to do with safety coming through here, actually. Something to do with safety, with protection. I actually feel that you walk away from something, journey. For some of you, it could literally be a physical move. But, you know, uh, this is a generic reading. But you either metaphorically or physically depart and leave something behind. could be a thinking pattern with radio, an internal thinking pattern, but you, I feel like some aspect of your world gets literally reinvented. It's almost as if you were an architect and you've set forth and you've built a dream home or you've designed a dream home or something like that. And then suddenly you make a decision some way along that actually the original design that you thought you were going to love, you realize it's not quite right for you. And you make those alterations, you reinvent it, or you, you suddenly decide, yes, it's your dream home, but you don't really like that location. I, I don't know, there's some big shift here for you, my beautiful Sagis. I'm seeing um, celebration, and I'm seeing a real sense of satisfaction. With Othilla, which is about often real property, and what we have here is somebody's home. I, I do feel there could be a, a relocation for some of you, but whatever you relocate, whether that is metaphorical or it's actual, you know, um, yeah, or it's an actual something, something in your world is going to be renewed, yeah, reinvented. Mercury in retrograde. It's very interesting. Mercury in retrograde is, of course, a card of disruption. The purpose of the retrograde energy, even though it is a little frustrating for us, the purpose of the retrograde energy is actually ultimately to give us um, an opportunity to see, I think, sometimes what isn't working or to slow us down and remind us to stop and smell the roses. If we're because if we're so busy, um, and so goal orientated, you know, the universe can show us a doorway of an alternative solution or an alternative route. And we're so busy and flat out, we drive straight past that, that entry point, as it were. We don't even see it because we're too goal focused. And Mercury retrograde energy gives you opportunity for reflection. I sort of feel like for you, Sajis, it's like sitting down at the drawing board and really re-establishing or literally reinventing some aspect of your world and with the universe orchestrating things so that there's a window of opportunity for you to make something happen quite quickly because we're seeing celebration here we're seeing that sense of uh, being feeling really content in yourself so there's definitely a shift which will always happen in eclipse season anyway but for you such terraces I think we are looking at almost as if uh, you yeah that redesign some aspect of your world and as soon as you redesign it and get clear about it which is radio again radio does suggest reflection going inwards and removing obstacles from within I think you can literally redesign some part of your world You'll leave something behind that didn't work for you anymore and step straight into something that really, really does work for you beautifully and brilliantly. This looks to be a very positive shift for you. Even if it feels disruptive, there may be stuff coming in that isn't working for you. If you think about the law of attraction, if something isn't working, um, that's a point of power for you, really, because if something isn't working, uh, it gives you an opportunity to recognise that you want the opposite, if that makes sense. So if something's not working for you, Sagis, really seize the moment and use that experience to define what you do want rather than to dwell in what you don't. That's what Rado talks to us about, moving inwards and removing those inner obstacles. So my beautiful Sagis, uh, you're welcome to join me for the bigger readings on Patreon, but this is your primary message. Um, you have an opportunity here to literally sit down and redesign some aspect of your world and 
actually it will mean leaving something behind but my goodness me you're stepping straight into what you do want as well as away from something that you don't so i'm seeing something uh, really powerfully positive here for you beautiful souls tons and tons of love and do check out the moon month because the incoming energy has got a really interesting ebb and flow to it and it really may work for you to be aligned with that as you redesign and reinvent some aspect of your own pathway. Tons of love, Sadie. See you soon. Hey, beautiful Capricorns. Let us ask Spirit, what is the most important message for you? for this moon month what do we need to bring up here fifth house creativity how gorgeous okay beautiful capricorns let's draw more cards for you you have fifth house creativity and there is your third card may we see what spirit wishes you to know about the most important message for this incredible moon month of um eclipse season i'm actually seeing oh one there I'm gonna to have to really dive in to get that card but it really caught my eye that's interesting what catches your eye you have Othilla the rune of separation inheritance you have Manas the rune of the self and you have Burkana the rune of growth and then you have Queen of Pentacles mm. you have the lovers and you have the seven of wands mm, how fascinating okay mm. this is very very interesting my beautiful capricorns my beautiful capricorns i think you need to I say need because the spirit source never tells us <laughs> what to do you have conscious free will and choice but this is about stepping up into something you really want. There's an opportunity to do this. Now you may be facing either competition. I mean, this particular seven of wands is quite competitive, but this is about picking up the baton and running with it. If you have a creative idea, it's, it's, it's recognizing that you, you can I kind of want to, I won't say fight your corner as such, but it's like take an, I, take an ownership. This is what I'm really feeling in, in the most strong message here. Take an ownership of what you want, irrespective of somebody else's perspective. The lovers is a card of choice. Queen of Pentacles is about owning something you desire. Your, it's a very sensual card. The lovers is a sensual card too if we're looking at choices in love everything here is about standing up and being seen standing up and being counted i kind of want to say with othilla the rune of separation leaving behind any element of doubt or insecurity or lack of ownership of something you really want it's almost like go, i want to say go for gold capricorn your message is one of really, really significant encouragement. Don't be afraid to be seen. Don't be afraid to have a voice. Don't be afraid to say what you would like. What do you want? What do you desire? Whether you're saying it to yourself or to others, this is an ownership of your choices, of what you would like, irrespective of what other people think. And kind of holding true to it, because I sort of feel like if you hold firm to something you really want, that there will be the potential for a creative solution to happen and for the universe to assist you in making this possible. Because Burkana is a, a rune of growth. It's a fruit bearing rune. It's about a new phase of life. So yeah, your message is remarkably clear, my beautiful Capricorns. Um, this is about really owning wholeheartedly, full ownership, step up, stand up and be counted ownership of something you really, really want and state it very clearly. You know, I would like this. This is what I would like. This is what I desire. Choices can be made to then make this possible. But yeah, irrespective of what other people think, that's the real deal here, Capricorn, for you. I think it's really stepping up and saying, this is a something, there, there is something for each of you. 
where you're needing to have a voice and it's very singular to you. It's something that's important to you. Have that voice, whether it's in a, a work environment, it could be quite a competitive environment, whether it's in a, a creative project, whether it's in a relationship with someone, family or a friend or a work colleague or even a, you know, a partner. But whatever, somewhere in your world, you need to have a voice and get really clear about what it is that you desire. That's what you're being invited to do here. Now, Capricorn, I do my bigger all zodiac sign readings um, on Patreon, my more in-depth ones, but I am actually for you going to draw a couple more cards. It's the first sign I felt an uh, urge and urge and a need to do this because I sort of want to know what the outcome of this is in terms of you having a voice. So let's just draw a couple more for you just to see what we're shown. I think those are they actually. Just feels really right. Yes, Page of Cups and the High Priestess. Okay, this is um, really, really lovely. So the outcome of you having a voice is that actually I think something will move forwards in the direction it's it's curious, it's not just the direction that you want it to be, but it's almost as if there is a purpose to it, actually, like a higher purpose. Yeah, it's like um, having a voice is, is really important to you at this moment in time. There's something you need to have a voice in, take an ownership of your desires, because it's going to steer the pathway forwards. But with the Page of Cups, we are seeing success, and that was what I really wanted to check out for you. So we're seeing a successful outcome. And yeah, it, it does feel as if it's moving you forwards on, in, on the pathway that you're meant to be following. So have that voice, beautiful soul. It's definitely moving forwards as it should. Beautiful Capricorns, this is your primary, most important message from spirit for the, the coming moon month. And um, yeah, don't wear a mask, have a voice, <laughs> seeing this again. Uh, beautiful souls you're welcome to check out my bigger more in-depth readings on patreon um and otherwise do check out the moon month because it's quite an interesting ebb and flow of energies with some intense bits as well so do check that out because you might find it helpful in navigating the month ahead uh, beautiful souls tons of love and i will see you in another reading really soon hey beautiful aquarius what is your message the most important message that spirit wishes you to know about for the coming moon month. Do you know, I'm actually seeing that card in the middle there, this one. Let's have a look and see what you have, beautiful Aquarius. Part of fortune increase. Well, Aquarius, this looks to me to be suggesting that eclipse season is bringing you something pretty fab. Okay, we have this card this card and this one. Oh, and that one. Okay, so you have four cards. We've been drawing three for every pack. Look at that. You have an increase in cards, my beautiful Aquariuses. May we ask for information for my beautiful Aquariuses, please? What's the most important message? I'm seeing this one and this one here as well. What is the most important message for my Aquariuses? Wow, so you have Tiwaz, the, um, this is the spiritual warrior, the rune of the warrior. You have Fehu, nourishment possessions, ambitions satisfied. Aquarius, I sort of, I'm thinking, I want to be an Aquarius this moon month. Wow, you have Fehu, um, possessions, unexpected rewards, ambitions satisfied, Burkana, the rune of growth. Beautiful souls, um, I want to say take action. Don't be afraid to step up or step forward or step into something. Uh, this has got so much pizzazz kind of energy about it. Let's have a look at your cards. Well, look at this, you have the Eight of Wands. Move things forwards, things happening fast. Take action now. You have the Knight of Pentacles. Okay. You have the World. And you have the judgment card. Okay, let me shift all these along because you've got this extra one. Let's move this along so we have a little bit more space. Right, okay. Mm. This is a real kind of reaping rewards from something, my beautiful Aquarius is. And what I'm seeing is a beneficial reward. You know, judgment day. 
it's a, a coming to coming together of something, reaching a conclusion. The world is a card of completions and new beginnings. The Knight of Pentacles is also a card for me that always speaks of bringing in the harvest. What I'm seeing here, my beautiful uh, Aquarius is, and this is your primary message, the most important message that Spirit wishes you to connect with for this moon month. I think that this for me feels like the last push in something. You know, uh, that last the last phase of something, when you have been perhaps building something, working something, working on something, even thinking about something. But you get to that point where you've either done enough procrastination or enough preparation, or you've been working at it for a long time, and you're at that point where it needs to be pushed forwards to bring in the harvest. I always feel with the Knight of Pentacles, it is like bringing in a harvest, but at a time when you've often invested a lot and you're quite tired. Beautiful Aquariuses, take action. Push ahead, seize the moment, rewards are coming. Judgment suggests that something reaches a conclusion or it comes to a head. With, with the uh, Fehu rune and Berkana, this is a really positive, positive, positive outcome because this is a new phase of life and this is a really, really um, beneficial time. It, possessions, it's having something, something coming to you. And we have part of fortune, an increase. Something you've been working on comes to fruition, but you have to take action. It's not as simple as sitting back and receiving, which is very, very interesting. There's definitely an energy here of pushing forwards and of you being a very active participant in making this happen. So persevere. If any obstacles pop up in your way, um, just trust that they're showing you something, some aspect of the journey you need to know to be able to bring this to its fruition. Yeah, if you are planning and you haven't yet stepped forwards, step forwards, take a risk. Everything in your reading, beautiful Aquarius, is, is about you moving something forwards to a point of fruition. This is your primary message and it's very, very clear. I can see you're quite tired, perhaps because this has been maybe a bit of a long haul, but my goodness me, beautiful souls, it has been worth it. So keep your eyes on your targeted intention with Tewaz, the spiritual warrior, be clear, be objective, cut through any crap and keep going, take action and make this happen. Whatever shows up, it will actually be assisting you. Persevere big time because this is really, really going to come through for you. That's the Eclipse Energy message for you, my beautiful Aquariuses. Beautiful souls, if you're interested in doing a deeper dive and tuning in with my bigger uh, All Zodiac Sign readings, you're welcome to check them out on Patreon. If not, do check out the Moon Month following the card readings here because the energy is very, very interesting. There's some quite intense periods when we can really push forwards, other times when we maybe need to pause and reflect and review. And you might actually find an awareness of that sort of flow of energy quite helpful to you. My beautiful Aquariuses, I am sending you all the love in the world. Have an amazing moon month, an amazing eclipse season, and I look forward to seeing you really soon for some other readings. Hey, beautiful Pisces, let's find out what is the most important message, the, the thing that Spirit really wishes to share with you, to discuss with you, fire element desire for this coming moon month, this eclipse season. Let's draw cards and see what we are shown for Pisces. We have one, two and three. <laughs> That's definitely your card. May we see what we are shown for my beautiful Pisces, please. One, two and three. Okay, so first of all, we have Gibo, the rune of partnership. We have uh, Tiwaz, Tewaz, the rune of the spiritual warrior. And we have Wunjo, the rune of joy. Pisces, this is beautiful. 
this energy absolutely beautiful okay fire element desire gosh i think something that you genuinely desire could well move forwards you may need to take action with tewas you yourself might have to be quite decisive about what you actually want you have the card of the world you have the high priestess and you have the two of swords mm, okay your message is actually really clear my beautiful pisces so in these readings i do my bigger readings on uh, patreon on another site but in these readings we re are really asking what's the most important message that spirit has for you for this moon month actually i feel like there's something you're not allowing yourselves to take an ownership of that's it's sort of like more than one message coming through to be honest pisces i feel like there's something you really want that you're not quite allowing yourself to see or almost as if you're not allowing yourself to dream that's what's coming through here it's not that you're not allowing yourself to see it but you're not dreaming big enough now clearly no reading is ever here to tell you what to do what you can or can't do you have conscious free will and choice but i feel like from the messages that i feel are channeling through for you is it's not so much that you don't know what you desire it's more that you're not allowing yourself to go for it. It, it. This is what I mean by not dreaming big enough. There is something that actually is, there's something you actually really want. And I think you know that you want it. But it's almost as if you're denying it to yourself. Not allowing yourself to say, do you know what I really, really want? I haven't got it yet, but it's that. That's what I would really like. Now, for some of you, it could connect to partnership. For others, it could just be a partnership of a, a union of something that would feel really good for you, the life that you would like. You're reading here with Wunjo, the rune of joy. Look at this beautiful, beautiful hummingbird. Hummingbirds can fly in every direction they can go up they can go down they can go forwards backwards round and round in circles there is no direction that is not available to them that's the message coming through through for you pisces my beautiful pisces there is something that you really really want i think you sort of don't believe it's possible for some reason we'll be checking this other stuff out in the bigger readings but th this is a reading that is complete in itself it is for you right here and right now my beautiful pisces and it's really about spirit giving you like the message of the month the message of the month for you is like this encouragement to really acknowledge something that you actually want and to believe in the possibility of it with the high priestess i feel that the pathway will be opened for you i think whatever whatever is around you at the moment that you feel is stopping you the circumstances around you whatever you feel is stopping you from being able to move it forwards you can actually move through this you can there, there will be some choices and decisions that you can take to move this ahead it is as if yeah the dream bigger the, the dream bigger there's something that you really want a solution an outcome a different shape to something perhaps a different picture of your world some aspect of your world take an ownership of it stop sort of denying denying it to yourself really that's what this reading is sort of saying look stop pretending that you don't want this when you know you really do or stop maybe that there's this it is it's this feeling of uh, there's something that you need to kind of acknowledge bring into the open really voice it to yourself simply to yourself it doesn't have to be voiced to anybody else but it's something that is going to bring you great joy and happiness and it is important and with the hummingbird and the high priestess i feel you're being um 
given a message that says there's more than one way to achieve this. You know, there's more than one solution. It's not black and white. Okay, you can have this thing. It's like you can have the world in your hands if you want. You can achieve the thing that you would like to achieve. And there will be ways of doing it. But you have to first believe in the possibility of this. And that is actually your message. In eclipse season, things can happen very quickly. We can be shown the relationship between the past, the present and the future. And therefore be able to take action in the here and now to progress things forwards. Giving and receiving. You deserve to receive. Take a risk. Believe. Trust. That, you know, there may be some different pathways, different stepping stones to take. But if you persevere, it can come to fruition. It may not be a, a straightforward shape, but I think it can. I think that there might be some negotiations to take place. But, I mean, that's for another reading. Right here and right now, my beautiful Pisces, your message of the month is clear. If you believe in it the universe will actively work with you, source spirit will actively work with you to make this possible. And the first step is really taking hold of that belief, taking hold of that desire, taking an ownership of it, bringing it into light, even if only with yourself. You know, set those wishes and intentions during eclipse season and then trust that you know, whether you go up, down, round in circles or round and about, there will be a way of making this possible. This is your reading, my beautiful Pisces. I am sending you all the love in the world, beautiful souls. Um, it, do check out the bigger readings if they are of interest to you. Otherwise, my beautiful souls, I look forward to seeing you for some other readings very, very soon. Tons of love to you. So beautiful souls, the new moon eclipse on October the 14th or the 15th, it depends where you are on our beautiful globe, um, is in Libra. Now, eclipse season is said to create a kind of energetic portal that allows us to see the relationship between the past, the present and the future. So this is incredibly empowering. Knowledge is power. And the point of power is always in the now. The decisions that we make today are creating our tomorrow and way beyond. And a new moon in Libra calls for love, balance, joy, fairness and harmony. So this is a seriously amazing window of opportunity to set new moon wishes and intentions that are going to bring you long-term happiness. And providing that what you desire is not at the expense, because that would be out of balance, of the well-being of, of anyone or anything else. Everything is primed to give you exactly the support and guidance that you need to bring this into being and make it real. The overall planetary connections are seriously backing up this energetic vibration. Now, the best time to set your wishes and intentions is in the eight hours from the exact timing of the new moon. So I'm going to bring up the timings onto the screen for you now. I can't put every city on our beautiful planet up here for you. There just isn't room. But this is a good selection and it should give you an opportunity to work out what the exact timings are in your location. The moon then moves into her waxing crescent phase from October the 16th through to the 21st and she will pass through Scorpio, Sagittarius and then into Capricorn. Overall, this moon phase is pretty fast paced and very ambitious. On the 16th and 17th, the lunar influence adds to some very potentially kind of potent dynamics, which if well channeled, could really kickstart your manifestations into solid, constructive actions. If you combine this increasing acceleration with consistent, positive thinking, even if challenges present themselves to you, the forward motion of this lunar energy will support you in moving forwards and maintaining your flow. So seriously go for it. 
Now we do also have a seven hour void of course period between the 19th of October and the 20th of October when the moon moves from Sagittarius into Capricorn. Now a void of course phase is basically when the moon is sitting in between two signs. She has left one sign and not yet entered the next. And sometimes this period of time is very small. Sometimes it's quite big. It can feel very liberating because the moon's energy is not channeled through the influence or the personality of a sign, but it can also leave us feeling a bit unanchored. So just bear this in mind in terms of how you are utilizing this overall flow of very dynamic kind of go, go, go energy. The first quarter moon on October the 22nd is in Aquarius. This is really about stopping and reviewing. Given that the overall lunar influence today is bringing massive potential for rebirth and transformation, I would suggest making a conscious choice to stop and just get very present to everything that's going on. Because the information you see today is going to help you to know where and when to slow down and also where and when to push ahead. This is a day to gain the information you need to really know how to proceed and progress as we begin to move forwards towards the full moon. The waxing gibbous moon from October the 23rd to the 27th passes through Aquarius, Pisces and then into Aries. The overall flow of this lunar phase looks to gather significant momentum with an underlying theme that is asking you to expand your horizons from the inside out, change your perspectives, change your life and take charge of this energy. So to use this energetic flow at its best, be open and available to embrace your absolute fullest potential for creativity infused with emotional awareness and then remain rooted in a balanced exchange of both giving and receiving. And to be honest, if you can do this, I think the energy is really, really going to work for you. We do also have another void of course period between the 23rd of October and the 24th of October. This is UK timings when the moon moves from Aquarius into Pisces. Now this is significantly long. It's 13 and a half hours long. So again, just be very thoughtful of this timing. It could be very freeing or it could leave you feeling a little bit un unanchored or a bit wobbly just be very thoughtful of this and keep it in mind we then reach a full moon eclipse on october the 28th or 29th depending on where you are in the world in taurus the energy of a full moon in taurus brings perseverance and it really inspires you to push forwards regardless of any obstacles in your path in actions of higher ideals, the energy flow today is really going to work with you. It's going to bring you staying power, stamina, perseverance. However, be mindful not to act like a bull in a china shop. Don't push your way through without any thought or regard. A Taurus full moon will also highlight areas where you might need to slow down and just tread a little more carefully. So, the overall dynamics of this full moon eclipse are inviting you to dig deep and embrace the fullest possible learning from all your life experiences and then emerge stronger and wiser with the clarity and perseverance to overcome any former insecurities that may have been holding you back. So it's a pretty fab full moon, to be honest, and because of the eclipse connection, where we can understand the relationship between the past, the present, and therefore how to create the future that we desire, this is a pretty fab day to really, really get still, notice and observe everything, while simultaneously working out how you intend to take things forwards. Let me bring up the timings for you. These are a selection of timings across our beautiful planet, which will help you to know that exact point of power. The disseminating or waning gibbous moon phase, which runs from October the 30th through to November the 4th, passes through Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, and then into Leo.
Now this moon phase sets off with a reasonably calm pace that kind of invites you to mindfully integrate and consolidate your learning from eclipse season in real terms. The essence of achievement through mindfulness and balance continues right into November. In fact, to be honest, the more balanced you are, so for example, your life work balance, your self care versus care of others, your heart and your mind, your logic, emotionality and empathy, um, all of these things in balance. I think the more you maintain a balance in all areas of your world, the more productive this period will be for you. Now, bearing in mind this need for balance or the benefit of balance, we also have a nine hour void of course period. And this is on the 1st of November when the moon moves from Gemini into Cancer. So keeping this in mind, I think we can really utilize this period of time to our absolute best advantage. If you're feeling very freed up and very balanced, you can move things forwards. And if you're not feeling very balanced, you can kind of get still and utilize the energy in a very mindful way. The last quarter moon in Leo on November the 5th is pretty fast paced and also quite potentially deep and emotional. Now, I think for everything that's going really, really well, this is just going to feel amazing. But if anything isn't running smoothly, it could feel quite intense. So don't be carried away in the emotionality of things. Whatever is taking place in the uniqueness of your own world, try to slow it down a bit. Get present and make sure that your thoughts and your words and your actions are all in alignment with everything that you wish to see and everything that you wish to manifest in the world. In other words, just keep it really, really steady and play it cool. The balsamic moon or waning crescent moon phase from November the 6th to the 12th passes through Virgo, Libra and then into Scorpio. Now we actually begin with a 12 hour void of course period when the moon moves from Virgo into Libra. And you know, 12 hours is a significant time. So notice how this affects you and really lean into this with your awareness. This moon phase tends to feel like it might strongly connect you with your desires and the things that really matter to you. And overall, the lunar influence can definitely be divided into almost two halves. The first from the 6th to the 9th, where desires are aided by synchronicities and potentially unexpected, but also very useful events and circumstances. And then the second period between the 10th and the 12th, when things seem to hot up a bit, where maybe unfulfilled desires are calling for expression. The diminishing lunar influence actually probably is going to soften these dynamics. Um, this is really, really helpful because it means this is then a great time for internal observation and journaling. Remember in the terms of the law of attraction, if we have an unfulfilled desire calling for expression, it means we can identify it and then set wishes and um, intentions accordingly when we get to the new moon that really align with wanting to bring this deep, deep desire, or this passionate desire forwards. Super souls, I hope you have enjoyed that moon month uh, update overview. Uh, it does look to be quite an intense and dynamic uh, month really ahead. So pretty exciting. Beautiful souls, uh, thank you for joining me. It's magical to be sharing all of this information with you. I have found manifesting with the moon to be utterly life-changing. So truly, truly, um, I'm loving the opportunity to share this with you. If you are interested in next year's Manifest with the Moon diary and journal, which really do give you the information you need to be able to sort of master these techniques and understand the energy and work out kind of how it works for you, they will be available for 2024 very, very soon. So just keep an eye out on YouTube because I will make an announcement after one of my readings or when I announce the winners of my monthly prize draw as well. I give away a free private reading and a pack of my Oracle cards and I will be giving away some diaries and journals as well. So if you watch out for the announcement as well, um, you'll know as soon as they are available. Beautiful souls, tons of love. Thank you for being here. It's an absolute joy to read for you and indeed to share this information with you as well.